Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and in this one we're going to be building one of these which is of course a chain drive. In order to achieve this it's quite a simple Expresso expression that we're going to be using actually along with some align to spline tags and some target tags in fact quite a few of each of those. The workflow for building this is going to be quite important and of course there will be some mathematical calculations involved in order to make the actual gear wheels synchronize correctly with the chain. But anyway, that's what we're about in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing we need is a path for our chain to actually run around. So we'll bring in a, a rectangle, but don't worry, it's not going to be rectangular in shape. <laughs> first thing we need to do is change the width to 925 and the height will make 310. We'll just hit H so that we can see everything and just move it and spin it around a little bit. Okay, great. The next thing to do then is to check the rounding and on here we're going to make this 310. So it matches the height and that's fine. That's given us the path. We'll change the intermediate points to uniform and that will work fine for us. So that's our path set up. I'm not going to bother to change the name, it doesn't really matter. I'll next bring in a circle, change its radius to 310 to match, or rather 155, I beg your pardon, 155, I want the diameter to be 310. That's perfect, that matches up with the path spline there. And then we need to move this so that it's in the centre of the rounding. And I know that the what we can do here, if we we can calculate this up actually if we say 925 divided by 2 and then we subtract 155 we that's what we need and it's actually minus we're going to go minus 307.5 so minus 307.5 and that puts it in exactly the correct place that I need it in and this is going to act as a guide for setting up our gear wheel OK, fantastic. So that's the first little bit of this done. And now we can move on and think about building the actual chain and where we're going to start from there. In order to do that, I need to bring in a cylinder. So we'll get a hold of one of those. We'll orientate it plus Z. I think that will work for us. And its radius needs to be 15. Its height, 50. We'll give it a single height segment and 60 rotation segments. In our caps, we'll give it a fillet and we'll just give it one centimeter. That should be perfectly good. The next thing I'm going to do is group this. So Alt-G to group it into a null and call this chain. I'm gonna drop this down here then so that it's under everything else. Now this cylinder, we need to give it an align to spline tag. And we need to give the align to spline the rectangle. So we can just select the rectangle there and then that places our cylinder where it needs to be. Moving on from here, we actually need 36 of these cylinders in order to make up the links of our chain. So I'll command drag to copy, copy these two and rinse and repeat until I get somewhere near the number that I need. One more go should do it. I'll just select all of these and pull that down below that one. We've got 32 now, so we need to get just four more. So I'll continue copying cylinder 31 until I've got the number that I need. So drag that one down. and a couple more and we're there. And that's it, that's given us 36 cylinders. So they've all got their aligned to spline tags and they're all working perfectly well. So all good, that's great. Everything is exactly where it needs to be. The aligned splines, we don't need to check the tangential. I'm not gonna do that on this occasion. There's no need to do it. So we'll, we won't check that one at all. Just leave that where it is. 
OK, so that completes the, the links. I mean, obviously, they're all at the same point on the spline at the moment, just at the, the, the beginning of the spline, point zero uh, of the spline. Uh, position zero, I should say. Uh, so that's why they're all at that point. And what we're going to do next is create the expression that's going to spread them evenly around the path spline. And to do that, we need to work with Expresso. Right, so let's give the chain an Expresso tag. So we'll come down to Programming Tags, Expresso, and get that on the chain. And then we're ready to give this a go. So the first thing I need to do is actually bring in a hierarchy. So come down to Iterators here and select Hierarchy. And the hierarchy is referencing the chain, which is exactly what we needed to do because we're interested in the elements that make that up. Down next is correct, it's all ready to go. So from here, we also need to bring in an object index. So we'll grab a hold of one of those. And we can plumb our output from our hierarchy into the instance input there on the object index. The next thing to do is get another iterator. And this time, we need a tag iterator. So we'll get one of those, bring it over here, plumb in get the output again from the object port from the hierarchy. And in this data type or tag type here, we'll say that we want to use the align to spline. And that's good. That's got that sorted out. Now, from this index, we also need to take a feed from there. And we're going to use a math node for this. So we want calculate math. And the function needs to be divide. So we can plumb the index into there. And we're going to divide by 36 because we've got 36 cylinders. And then moving on from here, we can bring in an align to spline tag. We can give it an object port and attach the output from the tag to the object port there. And then we simply need to come down to tag properties, say position, open this up, and then connect the position there. And we now find da -da, that we have our links all working. Now, this is not the complete expression. This is just to get us this far. OK, there's a bit more that we need to do in order to make this all work. But that's perfectly simple. Uh, as you can see, it just literally divides the index value of the current cylinder in the sequence by 36 and then uses that value to position the cylinder on the spline so that all of the cylinders are therefore placed at regular intervals completely around the spline. That's how it works. So it's quite a simple expression, but it's it's quite powerful, as you can see. OK, so we've reached the point at which we can start to turn this thing into something that really does resemble a chain drive. And to start with, we're going to bring in a cogwheel. I'll group it into the circle and then zero out the x axis. Moving on from here, I'm going to hit F4 and go into an orthogonal view, which, as we're being told up here, is the front view. And we can start work and start getting this thing where we want it. So we'll select teeth. Now, it is an involute, of course. Uh, we just want 16 teeth. That will be fine. Our root radius, I'm going to make 141. And the addendum radius, I'm going to make 168.75. Everything else is good apart from the pressure angle. I just need to change that. I'm just going to make that 10. And that just gives us, I think, a better shape for our teeth. And it will work nicely. That will actually look quite nice. Now, the only thing we need to change now is the orientation. And I found that 5.5 is a good round number for that. That gets it just about where it needs to be. Obviously, if you don't, you know, you're not 100 percent happy with it, you can play around with these numbers and fine tune it to your heart's content until you get it exactly right. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And that will do fine for us. Great. So that's the first part. If we move on to the inlay tab here, we want spokes. I do want five spokes. Obviously, they're a bit too big at the moment. We just need to change our radii. So we'll say 114 for the outer radius and 39 for the inner radius. And everything else can stay the same. It's all good. So that's given us our first cogwheel. We can remove that from the circle and then hold down my Alt key and drop it into 
an extrude. Much, much too big at the moment in the extrude. The actual offset is way too big. So let's just go into the object here and make that 20. That'll be about right for us. And I'm just going to switch to my top view, so F2. And just we just need to align this correctly. So it needs to be placed at minus 10 so that it's in the middle of the, the links there. And that's looking good. In our caps, I'm just going to give this a radius of, or rather a size of two, and that should do fine. That looks really nice. We'll just rename this driver, and then I'm going to copy it, rename this driven, and down here, all I need to do is take away the minus sign in front of the three, hit return, and it's in the correct place. So we've got two very nice cogs, or two very nice gears, I suppose, if you want to give them their proper name. They're all set up for us and ready to go, and it's all looking quite nice. The next thing we need to do is create the plates that make up our links. So we'll do that next by firstly bringing in a circle. We'll change its plane to XZ. We'll give it a radius of 15. And then I'm going to drop this into cylinder number eight and zero it out. I've dropped it into cylinder eight because, as you can see, it's near the center of the chain. I'm also going to hold down my command key and then drag a copy of this circle into cylinder nine. I'll then zero that one out so that we've got both of our circles in the correct places for the starting point to make up our a little plate for the, the link. So with this circle selected, what I'm going to do is in my rotation B here, say minus 180 to just change that there. There's a reason for that that you'll see in a little while. Moving on from here, I'll hit F4 again to go back into our front view and then I'll make cylinder eight disappear and also cylinder nine. And now we can see our circles. We'll make both of them editable so we'll say C to make them editable and then I'll drag them up to the top and just place them there for now. Now if I click on my closed spline checkbox here now you can see why I rotated this circle here through 180 degrees. I didn't want them both facing in the same direction for this reason because if they were both in the same direction, it would cause us a bit of a problem because we've got to work with the order of the points in these things, okay? But what I'm going to do first, I'm going to close that back up again and then select them individually, come up to my spline menu here, clone, create outline. It does want to be a distance of six centimeters, so we'll click on there to say that and then do the same thing again for our other circle. And that's fine so far. So now I will select both of them and check my close spline. Great. The next thing to do is actually get a hold of point mode. So we'll go into point mode. In the spline, get the spline pen tool. And we can think about closing these. Now, probably in actual fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I won't do that yet because I think it will open it again if I do that in the wrong order. I think I'll just end up with an open spline again. So what I'm going to do, if I select just this one and I say, let's just select that, and I say, let's have a look, point order, move down sequence, and I do that again. That's fine. And then I can do this one here. If I say move down sequence and do the same again. Great, that's given me what I want. And now I can go into my spline pen tool, click on here, click on here. That's closed that one. And it's given us an extra spline. That's not a problem. And we can do the same here. And this will give us an extra spline as well. So that's done those two for us. The next thing to do is to just move this circle up to here. Select this point and delete it. 
do the same with this here delete that one okay great so we're doing really well we've got what we want now in your snapping I mean I've got snap on at the moment so snaps enabled but in here what I need to do or what you need to do is select grid stroke work plane snap check this box because that's what you want to be working with okay so leave your snapping on and we can then basically get a hold of our spline pen tool again and we can think about making this work out now what we're going to do first is select all of these and then hit this button down here which is connect objects and delete so hit that and we've done that straight away it's opened the spline again so what we need to do get our spline pen tool and we just need to close these up don't quite know why it does that but anyway it, it does so be aware of that so they're ready to go now the next thing to do is click on here click here click here and then down the, at the bottom here the same thing so that's all done and that's all all present and correct it's all ready to go all we now need to do is select these middle points come into spline tangents soft interpolation and we've created the spline that we're going to use to make our link plate so let's go back into our well in fact we can stay here now it doesn't really matter does it so with this selected what I need to do is just go into model mode now we can see that our axes are nowhere near our spline that's going to present us with a problem so we've got to uh, just just work on this so if we go into well in fact what I'll do I'll bring back our cylinder number eight what I need to do is put these axes in the center of this cylinder so that's the next thing we need to do so if I come up into tools here I've got axis axis center and all I'm going to do is execute that to put it in the middle of our spline I'm not going to worry about lining it up with that actually I don't really need to all I need to do is leave it there moving on from here I'm going to drop my spline if I hold down my alt key drop my spline not into there drop it into an extrude it's going to view or the top view I should say just have a quick look at where we are yep that's okay I'll make this five and then what I'll do from here is move this until it's level with the rounding there I'm going to take the snap off I don't need that anymore just make that level with the rounding that should be fine take a copy of it so command drag bring it up to level with there and then all I'm going to do is put minus five in here to bring it back the other way and that should be fine that will work I think let's just double check to make sure that we're on the rounding somewhere about there that's fine that's good so I've got a couple of those done there and they're ready to go the next thing I need to do instead of grouping them I'm going to bring in a null object so bring in one of those and I'm going to transfer that null into cylinder number eight just put it in there zero it out and then remove it put it up here drop the two extrudes in and that's done and now if I select that that is actually in the right place because it's perfectly aligned with the center of there and my two link plates are grouped into it and that's what I want so if we look at our top view we're perfectly aligned with the center that's exactly where it needs to be I'm going to rename this wide link just make sure I spell it correctly wide link that's good I'll take a copy of it and I'm going to transfer this to cylinder 9 in fact I'm going to make that visible again just do that drop this into cylinder number 9 zero it out and now that's in the correct place and then all I have to do is get a hold of these go into my top view so F2 and then bring them 
to where they need to be, which is about there for that one. And if we just move this one up to about there, that should do nicely. And we can call this narrow link. OK, great. So what I'll do then, I'll get a hold of my wide link and I'm going to drop that into cylinder eight. So now those two are both in the correct position. And that's great. We can move on from here. The next step is in many ways, well, one of the key steps, actually, because what we've got at the moment, we've got this Z axis facing in the well, it's facing along the Y axis in our world coordinates. And we need it to be facing towards the left of the screen. That's what we've got to do. We've got to do that for both of our links. So we'll, we've got our wide link selected. I'm going to select my rotate tool. And with this axis here, I'm going to start moving it and then hold down my shift key and rotate through 90 degrees. Same thing with my narrow link. Start rotating. 90 degrees. And then I can go back into my move tool and we can see that our Z axis is now facing in the correct direction for both of our links. And that's important because we're going to be using target tags and they always face along the Z axis. They always target along the Z axis. So that's why I've done that. And it's a very, very crucial stage. If you forget that, you're going to cause yourself some problems in a minute. But anyway, that's another little bit of it done. The next step is actually to start taking a few things away. But before we do that, I'm just going to switch off the express or expression. And now we can start doing that. So let's take away these and we'll take away all of these. And that just leaves us our two links, which is fine. I'm just going to rename these. So I'm going to take away the suffix there and just rename that cylinder dot one. And then we can add some target effectors to both of our links. So if we come up to our tags, we can select target tag there. And we won't place anything in here yet. That's the last thing we need to do. So we'll just leave this blank for now. Just close those two up and then we can start copying as we did before. So just drop those two under there. Those four under there. And it's the same process as before. Just drag that one down into there. And then it's just a case of copying number 31 until we've got to 36 cylinders again. And one more. And that's it. So we've got back to 36 cylinders. The next thing to do is open them all up, which is a bit of a bind, but unfortunately we've got to do it. But by the power of editing, I'll see you when I've done it. And just a few more to go. And one more and we're there. OK, so that's all of our target exp uh, expressions there, our target effectors or our target tags, I suppose I should say. They're all exposed and ready to go. And that's why we've opened those up. OK, excellent. The next thing to do, select our espresso and turn it back on again. At the moment, it won't be doing anything because we have to place an object in here. So we've got to get an align to spline, drop it in there. And hey, presto, there we go. We're back to where we were. Obviously, as I say, at the moment, everything is facing towards the left of the screen. We've got to fix this by working with our target tags here. Very simple rule. The target tag always needs the cylinder that follows it placed as the object. So cylinder number one, if we drag this in here, we can see that instantly this has snapped into place. So again, if we select the target tag of our narrow link, select cylinder number two, the same thing happens. And it's just a case of rinsing and repeating. So again, by the power of editing, I'll see you when I've done it all. And the last couple. Now, Oops, I've done that wrong. Hang on. Let's just go back. That needs to be rectangle. That's OK. So where are we? So we've got 33, 34, 35. That's where I need to be. And this last one here, well, there's nothing there, is there? So we've got to go right back up to the top and select the first cylinder.
and that gives us a complete chain. And there we go. Absolutely perfect. There's one little problem that we need to fix. If we come down to the bottom here, we can see that when I copied 31 onwards, they all had narrow links. Well, I've got to work that out and just change that. So 31 should have a narrow link and 32 should have a wide link. So let's take away this narrow link, get a hold of a wide link and just copy that into 32 there. And what we'll do is zero that out. And then it's got to be looking at not cylinder 31, but cylinder 33. And that's fixed that problem. The next one will be a narrow link and the next one should not be a narrow link. So 34, we've got to take the narrow link away, copy the wide link, put it in here, zero that out. And then again, this has got to look at 35. Whoops, that hasn't worked. I don't know why that hasn't worked. That's a bit strange. What's going on there? Don't understand why that's not working. Let's just try that again. It's misfired. Let's just get a wide link. Get a wide link, drop it into 34. Let's just zero it out. Right, that looks as if it's, it looks correct. Let's go into the top view and just have a look down on top of that. It looks as if it's in the right place to me. I don't think that's, that doesn't look wrong. Certainly doesn't appear to be wrong. No, I don't think that's wrong. So that's, let's just have a quick look at it in this here. Right, and I, why is that not? Do I need to zero that out as well? Yes, I needed to zero, I think I needed to zero that out. Okay, that's fine, so that's zeroed it out completely. And then all I need to do then is select that there and drop 35 into there, and it's correct. Right, that's, now that chain is absolutely correct. That's fine. Yes, yeah, so be aware of that. When you copy that last that last cylinder, you've just got to do a little bit of adjustment to make it so that the chain is actually correct. But that's great. You can see that that's working absolutely fine now. Before we start to animate, I'll just click on my search here and type CY for cylinder. I'm just going to put some finishing touches on the model. So come into their basic tab select automatic and just change their color to a sort of yellow, just something a quite nice yellow color. That'll do nicely for that. And then we want our extrudes that make up our link plates. So we'll type EX for that. Select that one and select all. In the caps, I just want to add some rounding because I hadn't done that. So I'm just going to say 0.5, I think in there. And that should do nicely. That just, just gives it that finishing touch and I'm quite happy with that. So that's great. So we can get rid of the search, just click off there. And now we're ready to start animating. Right, so how are we going to animate this? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is select my rectangle, come down to my tags and put an espresso tag on there. I'm going to drag both my circle and my rectangle in. And I'm going to give both of them object ports. Next thing I'm going to do is get spline tags or rather spline nodes. Get two of those. So I created one, drag another one down and I'll connect both of my object ports from my rectangle and my circle to the object ports of the spline nodes. And I'm also going to add length ports at the output stages to both of them. Get a couple of result nodes and connect those to the length ports. Right, so that's given me the lengths of both my splines. Now, obviously I'm going to use this as a calculation. What we're going to do is divide the rectangle's length by the length of the circle and then multiply the result by 360. That's the formula that we're going to use. However, I just want to point something out to you. If we bring in our calculator and I just clear that for now. Note that the 974.273 in there. Now we know that our circle 
has a radius of 155 so therefore it has a diameter of 310 so if we say 310 multiplied by pi that gives us the that will give us the circumferal length of the circle that's coming up with a value of 973.893 974.273 in here so there's some kind of accumulation of error going along going on in here so this is not quite the correct value now that must also mean if we follow the same logic that this is exactly the same here this number is probably going to be too big as well so there's an accumulation of error creeping in within this spline uh, length here so anything that we get is not going to be quite the right number so there's going to be a little bit of trial and error to sort this out okay so be aware that that's likely to happen but anyway let's just carry on from here and we'll divide two well i need my calculator again let's just get it back we'll divide 2204.273 by 974.273 and we get a value of 2.262 etc and if we multiply that by 360 we get a value of 814.492 or 493 that'll do for our value so what are we going to do with this value well let's move on from here if we go back into our original espresso expression what we can do we can bring in our driver so our first gear there and we'll give this coordinates rotation rotation b and we'll pass this to our driven gear just view it 100 percent pass this to that so we can give that coordinates rotation rotation b and then if we select our driver we can move this we just move this and we've got both of those working that's fine just move this up a little bit because I'm going to put a degree node in next as you know I like to work with degrees so we come down to calculate degree just bring that in in fact what well, we're using it to convert radians to degrees here so that's what we're doing and then we need a range mapper so we'll come down to calculate and bring in our good old friend the range mapper and connect that there so what do we need to do with the range mapper well basically what we've got to do we want an input lower of zero and our output or our input upper we need the value that we've got in here so we need 814.492 so 814.492 and the output range is it will be 0 to 1 because we're going to be using it for the position of the aligned to spline and that is a value between 0 and 1 okay so we've got that there the next thing we need to do is bring in a math add so what I'll do I'll just copy the divide and change its function to add plumb this into here and plumb the divide into here and then all I need to do is move this a little bit Let's just give us a little bit more space move this over here and plumb the output of the add into my position there okay so now if I start to move this what do I get so the chain moves but it's moving in the wrong direction and that's because in the range mapper I need to say minus 814.492 so now when we move we find that we do get it moving correctly but let's just go into our front view again and see what's going on in here so if we just come a little bit closer just zoom in a little bit so that we can see where we are if we start to rotate you'll see that this will gradually go out and you can see it's starting to go into the tooth here it's it's starting to just gradually slip and as I said that's because of this accumulation of error that's going on within the range mapper because of this value here this value isn't quite right now I happen to know that the correct value is simply 810 
so minus 810 and if we watch what happens to the chain when I hit return you can see that the the chain has moved back this way and now when we rotate you'll find it won't slip yeah it's it's perfectly good now it's okay and it's pushing against this tooth and there's a little bit of a gap there which is exactly what you get with a chain drive when you think about it it would it would be up against this tooth so that's really working nicely so yeah all good that's fine so that's the value that you need to put in there as i say i just don't know why that happens there is an accumulation of error within the uh the well within the spline node that gives you the length of a spline it's, it's a strange thing i don't know why it happens but it does but anyway that is how you do this that's the the actual espresso expression for it it's as simple as that that's all you need to do um, and you get yourself a really fantastic looking chain drive that works pretty much exactly the way you'd expect it to and it works backwards and if we then decide that we want to put all of these into a null so that we can group them and call this chain drive you'll find that you can move it anywhere in the scene and it will work it won't present you with any problems get hold of our driver once again start moving it and yeah everything's great it all works fine so yeah that's it and that is basically the way you go about creating a chain drive so if we wanted to uh, just put some keyframes in there of course we can if we just reset our driver to zero we can simply record our positions if we wish to and then take it from there if I just add another 90 frames just to make it a little bit longer come into my coordinates manager and am I at frame zero no I'm not so if I take it back to frame zero and I just record the well I don't need to record those actually don't need to record those I just need rotation B just record that one that's it and then move to the end of the animation and I say we'll say if I go minus 720 in there and record that and then we'll go back to the animation start and see what we get just click off there and there you have it we've got something quite nice and I think this should loop okay actually let's see what happens yeah and it loops okay doesn't it and there you go that's how you create a chain drive using Expresso and a few tags well anyway that wraps this tutorial up so I hope you've really enjoyed this one and if you have then as I always say please like the video and if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel and of course leave a comment and ring the bell and wherever you happen to be on social media please please share the video because all this good stuff helps to keep the channel going in the right direction but anyway for now that just about wraps this one up so I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial